listening to the Construction Big Breakfast, where we give you a hearty serving of insider tips and business strategies to help fuel your day so you can thrive in the construction industry. Now, here's your host. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Tip Top Tim Fitch, and welcome to the Construction Big Breakfast. Today, we'll be diving into all sorts of interesting topics which are very different from our usual fare. Uh, we're going to be talking about the City Climate Action Strategy, what it's like to be an alderman of the City of London, and what you need to do to become the Sheriff of London. Because joining me today uh, for our podcast is our very special guest, Alderman Sheriff Elect Alison Gowman. And by the time this is published, fingers crossed, God willing, you will be the Sheriff of London. Welcome to the podcast, Alison. Thank you. Can you give our listeners a little introduction to yourself? Yes, thanks so much. I'm Alison Gowman. I'm a lawyer in the city. I'm a commercial real estate lawyer and have done that for 40 years now, I've got to say, and I've really enjoyed that. But part of that time, I've also been in parallel an elected member of the City of London Corporation. And uh, that was, first of all, as a council member and now as an alderman. And I've been an alderman of the city for 20 years. Fantastic. We're going to be diving into that because this is uh, it's a hidden part of the City of London or London life which uh, we're going to illuminate everyone about. So, Alison, it's great to have you on today. Now, anyone who's done any research will know that the first question before we get into the meat and potatoes of our topics today is, well, what did you have for breakfast? Well, Tim, I'm quite proud of the fact that I really always have a good breakfast every day and good to me means lovely organic yoghurt and fresh berries, raspberries, blackberries and blueberries and I really enjoy breakfast, it's my favourite meal I've got to say, so this is perfect for me. Well terrific, we obviously aligned with our own philosophy of life. Uh, I got a bacon roll from Jude who runs the taxi shack <laughs> on Russell Square this morning, bacon uh, with brown sauce in a roll, fantastic. Anyway, so uh, Alison, what is an alderman? Well, aldermen do exist across England and Wales, but the special thing about the City of London is that we still have aldermen who are elected by the people who live and work in the city. So an alderman is an elected member. And in the city, most of us are independent, so we're not party political, although we are you know, local councillors who in most of the rest of the U uh, England, Wales, UK are actually party political. And so we are involved in the governance of the City of London. But because the city has lots of different sort of aspects, it's not just a local authority, it has wider regions and, and interests, uh, promoting business, running lots of open spaces, running three wholesale markets. You know, the aldermen and the council members are all involved in this very wide-reaching work, which stretches beyond the city, the square mile, into the rest of Greater London. And as an alderman, I've been on lots of committees, which sounds very boring, um, but there's also a little bit of ceremonial. I dress up in gowns and uh, take part in services and other things, including involvement of the Lord Mayor and the Sheriffs. So if I've got that right, it's, it's, you're part of the governance mechanism uh, yeah. of yeah. the City of London, yeah. and it's got various roles to do with committees, some ceremonial stuff, or yeah. some things which are like, almost like promoting the city. Going to the, the yeah, I think functions. maybe I, you, I don't think you cut me off, but maybe I should have gone on to say yes, promoting the city is really what the aldermen are doing. We're ambassadors for the city. The city promotes the financial and professional services world, which is not just based in the city, but is, worth, but is based in London and it's based in you know, Edinburgh and Manchester and Leeds and, and Liverpool. You know, it is a very important part of our UK economy. And so the city is driving that in that way. And we're ambassadors to overseas visitors. We go overseas to promote the city. And we have various themes and interests that we want to promote that the city is good at. More about that later. Now, I said right at this very start, you're the sheriff-elect. It's a special type of sheriff. It's the aldermanic sheriff. So for the, for the benefit of our listeners, I mean, the sheriff of London, we've, we grew up with the... Yeah, Dick Whittington and the cats and all the rest of it. Mm. What does the Sheriff of London do? Well, Dick Whittington would have been a Sheriff before he became Lord Mayor. Um, so it's part of the um, governance. They, they were, the Sheriffs were originally appointed by the monarch to look after the law. They were law enforcers, as they are you know, now traditionally in the United States, if you like. Yes. But obviously they all started here in the UK. So they are very closely connected to law enforcement. 
And in the city of London, which is, again, the square mile, there are two sheriffs, which may seem we're over-sheriff, but it's very historical, and I won't go into all the details. But we're still very much involved in uh, the law enforcement. We, we, we reside we um, preside over the Old Bailey, the central criminal court, the number one court in the UK. Um, so we're involved there looking after the court, the judges, uh, making sure things run smoothly. I mean, during COVID, it's been really important that you know, they've got the support from, from the local authority through the corporation and through the sheriffs to be able to operate still, which they have throughout the COVID pandemic, which is great. So we have a role around enforcing the law, which sounds slightly strange. Of course, we're sort of lay people in that sense, yes. but there's a, there's a formality to it, but also a reality to it. But the sheriffs are also very closely linked to the, to the Lord Mayor, because you have to have been sheriff to be Lord Mayor. And um, the Lord Mayor has a profile of promoting the city, but particularly ambassador for financial and professional services, and travels extensively in good times, and yes. start to do so again, promoting um, the city within the UK, in the regional visits around those cities I've mentioned where there's a lot of uh, important uh, financial and professional work going on. And the sheriffs work with the Lord Mayor. And the sheriffs are also very involved with the livery companies. So um, there are 110 livery companies uh, promoting individual professions, trades and crafts. And they're involved in that whole governance. There's sort of a real network. It, what makes the city, you know, it's its heritage, but it's also modern city where these people are actually involved in modern trades and businesses as well. And they make the city, you know, a, a large community of, of networks and interests. And together, they can do an awful lot if they want to work together, the livery companies. And I'm very keen for them to do that. I'm just going to look, that's really great. I'm just going to take a little deeper dive there, particularly on the livery companies, because, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're not secret, but there's a bit of mystery about them, because I suppose in recent times, they haven't been particularly brilliant at marketing themselves outside of their chosen profession. So I mean, I mean, two construction related ones, mm -hmm. one modern, one ancient, I and mean, the constructors I think is how we met, and then yeah. Pavius uh, yeah. as well. Uh, and I know within the constructors we're doing a lot to try and raise the profile, become much more active, attract a, a more diverse membership, um, it, you know, not just demographics but across all mm -hmm. the diversity spectra. Um, and it's, that's quite exciting. And of course, you know, one of it, that's really why we invited you on. We wanted to get the, the, the message out that there's, there's a whole network of like-minded people who you might be associated with by your work, but you can then associate with a bigger group as well, mm. all doing some interesting stuff in and around the city. Yeah, I mean, you're a perfect example of that, that you sort of understand the heritage, but you see the modern purposes. And frankly, the constructors and the paviors, your two livery companies, are very much involved in modern business. Um, the trouble is, or not the trouble, but the fact is that some of the livery companies, their crafts and trades, have disappeared because they date back to medieval times. And it's that element of mystery. They're even called the mystery. Some of their names are the mystery and guild of the worshipful company yes. of whatever. And so that, that, that isn't mystery in the sense of you can't work it out. It's sort of in a sense of more of a magical mystery, if you like. But, but it's important that um, we do talk about what the livery companies do because they're huge charitable organisations. They're uh, very much involved, as you said, in their trade and craft and profession. They're, some of them actually regulate um, the, the set exams for certain of their professions. The farriers, the, the apothecaries are all involved actively in the current business of their, their craft and trade. That they're very charitable and they're going out into you know the, the widest area, sometimes linked with what their own profession is. So the Fletcher's Livery Company are involved in Paralympic archery. Great. But others don't have a direct link there, but are doing an awful lot around education, deprivation. And again, there is a financial um, barrier sometimes because you do have to pay to belong. And that's why I think sometimes they look to be exclusive. And I think livery companies need to consider how they can make that a little bit more open and wider to people to be able to come in. But the, the modern livery companies formed in, in the last 100 years are all linked to current professions, solicitors, actuaries, um, you know, IT. IT or information technologies, exactly. The art scholars are the latest. So they're people actually involved in those particular professions now. 
Uh, and they are certainly in their professions, you know, coming together and making sure they can make a difference in the work they can do. And everybody's a volunteer. That's what's amazing. That's the power of delivery companies. You know, almost everybody joined because they wanted to do something around what their delivery is all about. And if we can only work together, then that could be quite a powerful force. We are correct because, well, correct, I'm agreeing with you. There's so much talent out there and lots of energy, mm. and it's just a question of mobilising it, and yeah. uh, all sorts of great things will happen. Yeah, and people want to do things. I mean, you know, there is a natural volunteering gene, I think, amongst people that want to get involved. Yes, just on. In terms of your, how you got involved, you, you, you've been a master of a company already, the Plasterers, which is obviously aligned... Uh, yes, to with the construction world, world. yeah, construction exactly. World. Actually, to be honest, my mother company, that's the first one I joined, are the Glovers. And I've been master of the Glovers livery company. And there, there's still a very active trade of glove making in the UK, which is both um, obviously dress gloves, but also um, all of, we've been wearing it all, you know, PPEs, you know, sort of... Um, Gloves that need are needed for the health um, health world, and also lots of gloves around construction, yes. uh, you know, and the military. So gloves are very very widely used. And then I became uh, the plasterer's uh, master, and that's very much involved again with the construction world. Uh, and that's again an active current trade, which is a really good way to to to, to understand because I'm not a plasterer, I'm a solicitor, and so I've had to really upskill myself um, in, in how it works uh, and what we can do to, to improve. On the slide side, were you master when it flooded recently? I was not blast? master when it was the water main, it wasn't our fault, the water main did flood it and it was yeah. before my time and it was a slightly sad moment, but we're perfectly up and running again yes. now and it is the biggest hall in the city and certainly worth visiting to enjoy the plaster work. And of course this is, I mean I know it well, for those that don't know, there was an ancient hall, the plot was sold, mm. and now it's basically underground, isn't it, underneath a development, uh, is it number one? London it's Hall? number one London Wall, and it's fantastic because it opens from the main hall, it opens out into the Jubilee Garden, it's called, and the Jubilee Garden is part of London Wall, the old yes. ancient London Wall is there, and the garden is left pretty much to grow wild, and it's scythed twice a year. Um, because the, the city wanted to be, you know, undeveloped to actually, you know, produce natural flowers. And we had two very interesting um, orchids during lockdown uh, arrived suddenly and lots of other wonderful flora and fauna. So creating a biodiverse garden is, is really fun, uh, even by neglect. <laughs> well, it, and a, a lot of those construction liveries, I know we're heavily involved in education and it's not just the professions it's trying to encourage people into the crafts as well which mm. at the moment is it, we know from our work with our clients there's a massive shortage of yeah. everybody mm. and materials mm. it's uh, something to do with uh covid something to do with brexit and something mm. to do with people don't want to work in construction yeah, as much supply as chains crap, supply, and all of that stuff so there's people. lots and lots of challenges mm. Uh, but therefore there's lots of opportunity, so yeah. that's part of what it's about. I mean, I, I, the, I, I think we've, you know, the charitable part is really important, the sort of education part, there's the fellowship part, that I suppose the more modern world would be networking, but there's all, yeah, it's also you create friendships with these things. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you've got to want to be long, you've got to find it fun, and finding fun you then work together and you understand things. And the working across livery through the construction livery companies working together is a way that we could make a really good impact because the construction world, as you say, is in need of some kind of um, you know, hand on the tiller to make sure it's got people and it's got uh, the crafts ready for the, the challenges. And you've just given me a brilliant segue into the, the sort of next topic that uh, we, we want to talk about, which is... I know within your work within the city, you're involved with the, the City Climate Action Strategy, and I know the livery companies are getting behind that. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about it, and what it's about, what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, so the City London Corporation are the first, I believe, the first local authority to set a climate action strategy that is fully costed. So we decided to go the route of not just declaring there's a problem, but actually saying there's a problem, and here's how we're going to solve it. And what the corporation has set is a target for their own scope one and two emissions to be net zero by 2027. And then for scope three emissions to be uh, net zero by 2040. So it's still ahead of the requirements. 
And I think it's quite challenging to, to actually get our own scope one and two by 2027 because we own a lot of property uh, and all of that will actually have quite a, a big job to be, get, to be able to get that to net zero. But we've started on it, we've set aside money uh, and we're working very hard on that. And part of the, the, the wider remit around 2040 is that we're saying to the rest of the square mile, we want you also to be fixing on 2040 for your emissions. And that means it's businesses, it's, it's churches, uh, it's livery companies and it's residents. Everybody that's in the city uh, needs to look at their, their, their own emissions. And I took on the lead to look at the livery companies. Some of them have halls, so they actually have uh, premises. Some of them have property investments, so they're physical things. Everybody's got financial investments, and everybody else has operations in some way as, as livery companies. So the Livery Climate Action Group is currently a loose affiliation, which we're now getting more strong. We've got a website we're setting up, uh, which will be live by the time this is broadcast. And we're going to be giving guidance notes and help and videos to those livery companies to see what they can do. Because initially it might think, well, does it really apply to me and what can I do? And I think to have some easy but you know, relevant, pertinent guides from other livery companies and individuals, because of all that expertise we've got, then it means that livery companies can get the help. And there'll still be you know, one-to-one -one help, if you like, if people want to have a chat through about what can be done. And a couple of livery companies are writing a full action strategy, climate action strategy for themselves. Some of them are thinking about it, and some of them you know, haven't even opened the book yet. So we just want to help people along the way, and it's a, it's a fairly long-term thing. It's not going to happen overnight, but we need to start, and we need to start and move quite quickly, I'd say. I can speak for the constructors, because mm. I'm the junior warden, so I know what's going on. Well, most some of it, anyway. Because um, we've created our own yeah. sort of committee. Great. And the, the chair of that committee is Martin Gettings, who's a very prominent sustainability, or say champion, expert, leader, Absolutely, leader, yeah. I think is the right word, uh, based in, uh, in and around the city. Uh, it's got massive energy, mm. and it's very exciting. And there lots of people got right behind it, mm. straight away. So I think your mm. good work has set an example. Uh, we're following it, and I expect others will as well. Well, I'm delighted, because it was just a one-off seminar, and then suddenly everybody piled in and said, yes, me, I want to be involved. And it's it, because of the diversity of all the livery company professions and, and interests, it means that we've got people giving us so much interest uh, and so many ways of actually approaching this. And I'm really surprised how many people have, have you know piled in, like the food group. So they're looking at it, people involved in transport. Uh, people involved in energy, of course. So there's a there's a great uh, there's a great th deal of things we can look at. In our own work, we although we are mostly construction, we have got a lux division. Uh, we've got some very very prominent fashion brands, and I know the fashion sector is really looking at the ESG stuff, particularly to do with the sustainability of fabric mm. and. The whole supply chain. So I wonder whether there's because there's a big group in the of livery companies which are associated with garments and yes, there's a textile there's group. A, there's a textile there's group. There's a textile group. Textile group. Yes, we're we're starting to talk to them. We're starting to talk to them. I yeah. think uh, I think you're right. Fashion, fast fashion, all of those things that that, that seem uh, to be difficult to crack. I think we we need to work carefully on. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that. I think you'll get some traction there because the, the, they know it's a challenge. Good, good. Well, let me come back to call on you to help us on that uh, on that engagement. So, Alison, so here we are. We're filming this uh, third week of September. Uh, God willing, when do you become the sheriff? Well, actually, a, a, official? Week, a week today, yes. On the 28th of September, I'm installed. Well, I'll give you congratulations in advance. Thank you. I'm afraid both myself and Sarah will be in Canada next week. We've got a <laughs> Canadian business which we're doing some work with. So, uh, what what does the installation of the sheriff look and feel like? Well, it's a very ancient ceremony, of course, all these things are. And we swear, that the two sheriffs swear uh, two oaths, actually, in unison together. So we'll have to practice that a bit and sign a book. And we sign a book actually with a, a quill feather that's given by the Scrivener's Livery Company. It's a goose feather, and uh, that will be very special. And they give us then the 
the feather pen after we've signed it, the quill perhaps I should call it. And uh, after we've sworn ourselves in, um, we then have a lunch. So that's a very nice way to welcome friends and family and to feel part of the city. Uh, tremendous. And of course, I suppose th this is what's so interesting about the city, that you've got these ancient ceremonies which presumably date back to yep. the 10th century Forever. or something. We were talking about a climate action strategy that stretches another thousand years. Yeah, I mean, the city's always thought long term, which is great. And that's why it can set, the city corporation can set a climate action strategy. And that's why I believe the livery companies can as well, because they all survive, have survived through a lot of vicissitudes in the city, as we all know, over the centuries. And, and can set a course for the future and pl plan long term. But start action now, I would suggest. And that's, I think, a very important lesson. I mean, I'm now talking about our professional clients when we're talking about strategy. You know, if you think long term, really long term, but act short term, things have got a life mm. that can go on for a thousand years. Yeah. And if you think like that, particularly if you're in a livery company, you know, planning what you're going to do with your investments, what you're trying to achieve, you don't have to worry about one year, do you? Mm. I mean, you've got a target for one year. But you can think a hundred years in front. What do we want to have? What did, what did we want to look like in a hundred years' time? Exactly, and I think livery companies have that weight of heritage. Even if they've only been going ten or twenty or thirty years, they believe that they want to be part of this continuum, and so are you know preserving the best, looking to the future, putting aside money for the future, not spending it all now, and then therefore they're going to keep that impact for forever. Basically, we all hope. Okay. Well, look, that's been really tremendous. Alison, and I think yeah, on that note, yeah, on that note, uh, let's wrap up the conversation. Oh, it's been really insightful. I hope it's been of interest to our viewers because yeah, it, it's, there's no secrets in the city, but it is a bit mysterious. And uh, yeah, it started with Dick Whittington a week before him, but you know, here we are, a thousand years later, it's still going. So thanks again, Alison. The, we will, in the show notes, put uh, details of how people get hold of you. Yeah. Maybe there will be a special sheriff email yeah. address. Yeah. Sarah will put that in the show notes and any, any websites. And of course, if uh, anyone wants to find out more about the city and how it works, you've actually written a book, which is a collection of... It's a collection of um, articles that I've written, really, for livery companies. So they're sort of fairly straightforward, easy to access, nice photographs inside on, you know, what does the sheriff do, what does an alderman do, the Lord Mayor, the town clerk. And some of the ceremonies are, are discussed so that if you're interested in, in how they work. You can only get hold of it through me, so you will have to pick up the email from Sarah. OK, well, that's really great. I've just got my own copy, so I'll be reading that. Uh, that looks really fantastic. So... Wonderful. And to all of our listeners today, thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this special episode of the Construction Big Breakfast. We have a new episode every couple of weeks, so click the subscribe button and tune, turn your notifications on so that you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, we'd appreciate a five-star review. And if you've enjoyed this episode today, please like it, share it, tell your friends and help us reach more listeners. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast or looking to collaborate in other ways, visit our website, www.invent.com, two ends at the end, the link's in the description, and fill out the contact form. One of our team will be in touch soon. See you next time. Bye. Want to learn more about how Invent can help your business maximize its bottom line? Head on over to www.invent.com and get in touch with our team today. Thanks for joining us this week on the Construction Big Breakfast. Make sure to visit our website, www.invent.com, where you can subscribe to the Construction Big Breakfast on all platforms so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a positive rating. Or if you'd simply share it with a friend, that would help us out too. Be sure to tune in for our next episode.